try not to break anything, to die, or tear anything up. But that being said, there's no guarantees. It's good to see it's never one of you. And again, let me express uh, my appreciation for being invited to come and to speak in this series of gospel meetings. I don't know whether you enjoyed this point or not, but I did, and I hope that I said some things that not only was encouraging, but it struck me, and uh, hopefully that we can have, have all benefited from what we're studying this morning. Again, it's good to have my wife, Gloria, with me. Uh, I got tickled that a while ago. She says, I think I must have gotten somebody to see this morning, so I'm going to move. I, I see a problem with that. You may have two people mad at you now, Gloria. I don't know. I'm always concerned when you're about going to a place that I don't normally go to because of that problem. And you know, you laugh when I say that there's something that's going to take this time. And uh, I hope nobody's attending the whole city. Uh, I hope I didn't get anybody's parking spot. I didn't say we were going. But I got close enough that it's right it's right to have service broken that I wouldn't get too wet. Not that I'm afraid of hell, I'm not here to tell you. I hope that you'll remember to listen to all Mr. Ponder on the radio. It airs each and every Sunday morning at 8 30 on on uh, the station that is identified in Perry now as Radio, 1490 AM, 103.9 FM. And it also streams on the World Wide Web at EDHGRadio.com. I hope that you'll listen, that you'll tell others about our program and encourage them to listen as well. Also, don't forget our gospel reading coming up in a couple of weeks with Brother Josh the Men, and we hope that you will come and, and uh, listen to him speak. Uh, as he preaches to us the Word of God. I want to ask you to try to remember something that probably is not present in this. It hasn't been too many weeks ago that we were dealing with ice and snow and all of that in the of those days. I guess this winter will probably go down in history as one of the worst winters, uh, at least in, in recent memories. In fact, I think I heard on TV that the month of March was one of the coldest, the third coldest in the country on record. Think about all of that snow that we have. You know, snow when it's falling is a beautiful visit. And as long as it's not barred by footprints or uh, other things like that, it is beautiful as it's laying on the ground. I thought about the subject of snow. And I want to bring a lesson that I hope I can tie you with that idea. Exodus 4 and verse 6 I'm going to use as a basis for our study. And I guess you have a couple on the screen, perhaps. But the the Lord said to him, Now put your hand in your bosom. And he put his hand in his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous like snow. There are other passages that likewise uh, give us the idea that the Bible recognizes and, and says something about snow. <clears throat> Numbers 12 and verse 10, And when the cloud departed from above the tabernacle, suddenly Miriam became leprous as white as snow. Then Aaron took turn toward Miriam, and there she was, a so leper. 2 Samuel 23 verse 10, uh, 20, Benai used, or was the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man from Capsule, who had done many deeds. He had killed two lion-like heroes of Moab. He also had come down and killed a lion in the midst of the pit on a snowy day. Proverbs 31 and verse 21, talking about the a virtuous woman, Solomon says, she's not afraid of snow for her household. Isaiah 1, verse 18, perhaps one of the more familiar passages to deal with the idea of snow. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins were as scarlet, they shall be as quiet as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as good. 
Guys, I think the snow is beautiful. It's fall. It's, I know the young people, I bet you see we've got a few more young people here on the front this evening. Uh, I know the young people like to get up on you know, a school day morning and look out the window and there, there's about five or six inches of snow on the ground, which means no school. I, I remember those days. Uh, they may be a distant member, but I remember those days. And snow is beautiful, but when it comes to doing adult things, I guess you might say, we might not enjoy it as much as we are young people. I think it's all representing the purity and the beauty that it is as, uh, as it is fall. And I thought of Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. Well, the Bible says, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. And I realize Jesus doesn't use the word skull in that word. <coughs> But think about the purity of the soul of one who has, come, who has yet to become the kind of being before God. Just as pure as that driven soul. Ezekiel 18 and verse 20, the Bible says, The soul who sins shall die. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father bear the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Again, talking about the purity of a, an innocent child. And you know, when you think about uh, what Ezekiel says in chapter 18, verse 20, it's hard for me to imagine how anyone can come up with the idea that a newborn baby is born guilty of sin. Ezekiel says differently, doesn't he? That the son does not inherit the guilt of his father, no more so than the father would inherit the, the guilt of the son. But then there's something that happens on that beautiful snow. And you'll remember this. It seemed like almost for many days and, and a few weeks after our last snow, uh, that as you drive along the highway, it's been bladed. There's a snow bank along the edge of the highway, but it's not pretty anymore, is it? It's not pretty anymore because traffic going down that highway at highway speeds has splashed all of that grind, all of that dirt and debris that's on the highway <coughs> over to the snow banks. And instead of being bright and white and beautiful, it's now to come up. Well, you know, that's, uh, that's the way it is as we live life. Our souls, as we begin living this life, we come into this world innocent, pure and free from sin. We don't know the guilt of sin. We don't uh, have any sin laid to our charge. But then as we grow older, as we reach the age of accountability, we come to be impacted by the ugliness of sin. As I mentioned this morning, and I'll say this to our young people this evening again, you as young people face tremendous challenges in our world. Now we as older folks perhaps talk about those challenges, but a lot of the challenges that you young folks are facing, we've never faced. Now, we had our own set of challenges growing up, but it's different today. It's a different world. And so I would encourage our young people, especially if you've obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ after having come to the age of accountability, that you be true to your Lord, that you be faithful. That no matter the challenges that Satan may place before you, remember there is one greater than Satan. And God has your best interest at heart. He wants you to succeed as a Christian. Don't become like that stone along the roadways that has now become mired with 
the ugliness of all of the filth. The filth of the soul is sin. The Bible tells us in Revelation 3 and verse 4, you have a few names even in Sardis who have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. I like that word defiled. Rather than being popularized and glamorized and all of that that men do to sin today, Jesus calls it a defiling. It, it is something that defiles the souls of men and women. In fact, I ought to make the observation that sin is the only thing that will keep a person out of heaven. It really is. Unforgiven sin is the only thing that will keep you and I out of heaven. And so let's make sure that we obey the Lord and have His forgiveness so that when it comes to ours to quit the walks of men, we can hear, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. And then what about Revelation 14, verse 4? These are the ones who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. These were redeemed from among men, being firstfruits to God and to the Lamb. John the Revelator uses the most intimate of all human relationships to show a correlation between, uh, between sin and being unfaithful to once made. And so we want to be sure that we don't sin against our Lord and Savior. Now, so far in this lesson, I've tried, and I think perhaps in a very feeble way, to show the comparison of the beauty of the falling snow and the beauty of the clean soul before God. But here's what the comparison is. That dirty snow that I've tried to paint a, an ugly picture in your mind that's along the roadways, that snow can never be pretty again. There may be other snows, and it may be just as beautiful as the one before it, but that ugly, dirty snow that has been driven to the roadside will never be beautiful again. But that's where the comparison ends. Because the souls of men and women, no matter how tainted by sin, our souls may become, can be, and we really want them to be, beautiful once again. Listen to what uh, New Testament writers say about the cleanliness that the blood of Christ offers. Ephesians 1 and verse 7, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. Redemption through His blood. Revelation 1 and verse 5. To Him who loved us and washed us from our sins in His own blood. Matthew 26 verse 28 as Jesus was instituting the Lord's Supper. Jesus says, For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. On that great day of Pentecost, the day that the church of our Lord was born among men, when the apostle Peter and the other apostles were standing before that magnificent group of people, several thousand, and they were interrupted in the course of their speaking Men and brethren, what shall we do? You remember what Peter's inspired answer was. Peter said, repent and let every one of you be baptized 
in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What a beautiful image the Apostle Peter <coughs> draws for us. To, to know that our sins, no matter how grievous, no matter how black, no matter how numerous they may be, can be washed away. And that only happens when we come in contact with the blood of Christ. I told someone before services this evening, tonight will be probably the shortest lesson in, uh, in this series of lessons this week. I can't preach long after eating like I ate today at lunch. Thank you ladies so much for that marvelous meal. But we don't want to stop without realizing the value of the soul, the eternal nature of the soul, and the fact that each and every one of us are accountable beings, that each and every one of us, no matter our age, will stand before the judge of all of the earth for those values. We'll give an account. And perhaps one of the things that will come up, did you have your sins washed away in the blood of Christ? We have a baptistry here in this building. It's prepared. It's ready to be used. It is in the act of baptism that we come in contact with the blood of Christ. The Bible tells us that Jesus' blood was shed in His death. The Bible also tells us that we're baptized into His death. It is in that act of baptism that we have our sins washed away. If you're here this evening, have never obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Have never submitted to the act of baptism. You may have done the other four steps in the plan of salvation, but without baptism, you have not come in contact with that saving blood of Christ. Why not come forward tonight and say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Make the same confession that the Ethiopian eunuch made in Acts chapter 8. And say, I want to be baptized so that my...